Hi guys, Chris over here, also known as Totally Dubbed HD, and you guys know I absolutely adore tech. Now, my fiance is a scientist, and today we're going to be working alongside this company who produces a health wearable. So it's basically merging science and tech into one. Now, to give us a bit of a background as to how gut health impacts mental health, I'm going to invite my fiance on, Laura. Ta da! <laughs> Hi guys, my name's Laura, I'm a pharmacist and a PhD researcher and I work with an amazing research group who, among other things, specialise in gut health. And my work specifically looks at creating new treatments to rebalance the microbes living in our digestive system. As you can see, she's way smarter than I am. Now, I'm curious to know, how does the gut actually link to the brain? So, I think rather than describing it in sciencey terms, I'm going to describe it um, with a feeling that we've, we've all experienced in our lives. So, when we're nervous, we're stressed, we're upset, it's really common that, yes, we feel these emotions in our brain, but we also feel them in our guts as well. So, when we're stressed, it's really common that we kind of have like a churny stomach, um, maybe we have stomach ache, we might even feel a bit sick and this just shows how the emotions that we feel in our brain are also linked to the rest of our body and specifically the gut. So when our brain is unhappy, often our guts are unhappy as well. So this explains the term gut feeling really well, the fact that we can have this thought in our brain, but it is translated um, into our gut as well. So that's some really interesting stuff and I'm exposed to it uh, because we work in the same office at the moment, so mm -hmm. I'm exposed to what Laura is doing. But I'd like to know a little bit more about the vagus nerve and also how that links with the brain and the gut. Sure, yeah, good question. So the vagus nerve is basically a nerve, it starts in the brain and it goes down both sides of the neck, it crosses over to the chest and then from there it splays out and links all parts of the gut. Wow, so it's kind of like a kind of tree, almost like you mentioned the branches at the top. And yeah, that's, to okay. that's a good analogy. Um, and you can kind of imagine it like a highway, so it links the brain with the gut and the gut with the brain. So signals can travel in both directions and this happens day and night whether you're thinking about it or not. So when the vagus nerve is sending signals from the brain to the gut, it results in kind of a rest and digest mode rather than fight or flight, meaning that our gut is relaxed and it can digest the food that we're eating properly. Oh nice. So if I'm a bit stressed, I'm not eating properly. I wouldn't want to eat properly because of because of that. Sometimes, yeah, it explains that feeling. When you're feeling stressed, you might not want to eat um, and you just feel a bit kind of bloated, then, then that's why. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's good to know. Yeah, and it works the other way around as well. So signals can travel from the gut to the brain. Mm -hmm. And there's some really interesting research showing that these signals can boost concentration, they can improve your memory, um, and they can lessen things like anxiety and depression as well. So it's, yeah, it's a really powerful nerve and really fascinating. So it's almost like a, se you imagine like a second brain almost, like a lot of people think of like primary brain, obviously our brains, but then in fact, down there, mm. there's a lot that's actually controlling your mood and everything else. Exactly, yeah. Okay, gotta eat some more nice food then, right? <laughs> okay, so with that in mind, can the gut also affect our mood and our emotions? Yeah, so this is such a new area of science and one that I find absolutely fascinating. But we're only just learning that the microbes living in our gut have an important role in our mental health. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, serotonin, our happy hormone, 90% of that is made in the gut and half of that is actually made by gut bacteria. Um, and these gut microbes as well can also activate the vagus nerve um, and in some cases the gut microbes can become unbalanced and this might be due to say a change in diet, it might be due to an illness or potentially medicines like antibiotics and this can change the way how the gut microbes interact with the brain via the vagus nerve and potentially increase things like stress, um, anxiety, etc. Okay, that's really cool. So what about vagus nerve stimulation, which I think is VNS, right, for short? Yeah, so um, vagus nerve stimulation is a term used to describe 
when you stimulate the vagus nerve, like the, the gut would do or the brain would do, um, either by electrical signals or by manual touch. And this is usually done by a device. Um, often these devices are implanted, say under the skin, to stimulate the nerve directly, or they can also be placed on top of the skin, um, so stimulating the nerve uh, from that position as well. Okay, that's pretty cool. So basically like what the Sensei does, it's like on top of your skin, mm. and it like sends those waves, those, those sound waves, and so you can then feel it to stimulate the vagus nerve, and that's how it links. Exactly, okay. yeah. So if you imagine, say, um, say a big fluffy cat sitting on your chest and um, breathing and purring on your chest, then that's going to feel nice, isn't it? Mm. And part of that is because the, the purring, the vibrations, are stimulating your vagal nerve and sending messages to your brain to relax and to de-stress. So it's all fascinating how it, it links. Yeah. So that's all well and good unless you're allergic to cat hair like I am. Yeah, then you wouldn't feel so relaxed. <laughs> That's good, okay. So now while the cat thing is quite funny to think of, and also for someone who's a bit of an allergy sufferer in that respect, is there actually evidence to support VNS studies? Yeah, no, that is an important question. Um, so there are. The best way in science that we can measure whether something actually is beneficial or not is to do something called a randomised controlled trial. And that's when you have two groups of people, um, you expose one to say the treatment that you're trying to investigate and one to um, kind of a fake treatment. And so then you can measure if the actual treatment has any effect. Okay. So in terms of vagal nerve stimulation, there are studies that show that it has benefit in treating depression, anxiety, and even things like headaches. Um, so there is good evidence out there. And then more anecdotally, it's thought that um, with activities like yoga, the deep breathing and the postures um, are also thought to activate the vagal nerve. And that's why those kind of activities make you feel relaxed. Nice, no, okay. So I can see now why you do yoga quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I, I guess I did it for years without knowing yeah, exactly. what it was doing. Well, that's great. No, that's, that's really good. Okay, so thank you for coming on. It was a pleasure. <laughs> I've, I really enjoyed it. So yeah, I learned a lot. Hopefully you guys did as well. And obviously I'll link down in the description below a research group's website. Your, you are actually got an Instagram page dedicated to gut bacteria and well micro it's actually called microbiome right yeah it's all about microbiome health so yeah you guys should definitely check that out. as someone who doesn't understand the ins and outs but is fascinated by it um it's just quite interesting for someone like myself to kind of learn about it and you make it quite accessible in terms of understanding that so i'm not just saying thanks that, but, yeah. <laughs> but yeah you should definitely check that out it'll be down in the description below now also in the description below you'll find a link to sensate products so definitely do check that out that essentially does do what we just talked about stimulates the vagus nerves by setting some low end frequencies on your chest and allows you to kind of relax so check it out i think it's really cool and i've also got uh, two separate videos on it and uh, not only me interviewing the inventor of sensate which is actually really fascinating for those people who want some more information about it but also having a little bit of overview and unboxing as to like how you actually use it so you can see me lying down and actually using it you can see how my heart kind of changes its rhythm and kind of slows down and basically makes me feel relaxed and I find that quite fascinating for someone who loves tech so it's cool that tech can actually do that so let me know in the comments below what you make of it and of course if you like this video give it a like subscribe and favorite share as it always helps the channel grow and I'd like to thank Sensei again for sponsoring this video all right I've been Chris aka Totally Dubbed take care of yourselves and goodbye <laughs>